Okay, let's have a look at the Nikon D90 next. The D90 is typical of Nikon's larger digital SLRs that have two control dials. On the D5000 we had a control dial on the back, now we have an additional one on the front. The other advantage of the bigger bodied Nikons is that we have a lot more buttons. See there's more buttons here and on the top. This allows us to change the camera settings such as autofocus and white balance without having to go into the menu. Therefore using the camera is a lot faster once you know the layout than, than using the, um, the more basic Nikons. So that's one advantage of the, of the bigger body. So let's have a look at the same settings that we had before. So on top we have our command dial, same as before, we've got the um, fully automatic mode, we have a variety of scene modes here, and then we have our four modes that we're interested in, program, shutter priority, aperture priority, and manual. So those work exactly the same way as they did on the D5000. Half press the shutter button, and now the lot of the information that we want is actually here, on top of the camera. So if you're in program mode and you want to change a setting, first of all make sure the camera is switched on, which it is, then half press the shutter button and that will turn the LCD on at the back. And then in this lighting condition you can see the camera has chosen a 160th of a second shutter speed at f6.3. Now even in program mode you can change that if you wish. You see that we're now in program star mode and we're changing the aperture. You can actually see a picture of the apertures getting bigger or smaller. So that's program mode. Now let's go to shutter priority mode, that's the S. That's the shutter button again. And now in shutter priority mode, the dial at the back will change the shutter speed. So there's a 250th, 320, 400, etc. So go one way, we change the shutter speed, go the other way, and as we change the shutter speed, it's changing the aperture to give you that shutter speed for this lighting condition. When we go to aperture priority mode, this dial will now change the aperture. It looks like exactly the same thing's happening, but we are actually changing the aperture and the camera's now trying to find a suitable shutter speed. So we go for a very small shutter speed, sorry, a very small aperture, then we end up with a slow shutter speed. Now let's go to manual mode. In manual mode, we need to change both the shutter speed and the aperture. Our aim here is to get the light meter, which is this strip here, to read zero. At the moment, we can see that it's pointing to the plus sign, so we're currently overexposed. So our goal is to change both the shutter speed and the aperture so that we have an arrow in the middle at zero. So let's first of all choose a shutter speed of 125th of a second. So I'm just moving the back dial. We've gone past it, there we go. So at 125th of a second, we are still overexposed. Each large line is one f-stop and each dot is, a th is one third. So we're currently one and one third of a stop overexposed. So now we need to change the aperture. And to do that on this camera, because there's only one dial, we have to press and hold the plus minus button here. So I'm holding that down and then now we move the dial and now we're changing the aperture. So in these lighting conditions, one twenty-fifth of a second, oh it's changing of course, and at f8 is the perfect exposure for this backdrop. So that's manual mode, where we're changing both the aperture and the shutter speed. So this is the meter mode, it's currently in the matrix meter mode, and we change that by pressing this button and then turning the back dial. So that's the spot meter mode, center weighted average mode, and matrix mode, so we'll leave it in matrix. Next to that is the plus minus button for exposure compensation. Just hold that down, use the back dial again, minus a third of a stop, 
we can get darker or lighter just by turning this left and right. Now one thing about Nikons is that you actually have to turn it left to go to increase the exposure and to the right to decrease it which is counterintuitive to some people but it's worth noting. All right underneath this we have the drive mode so pressing the drive mode is going to change this from single shot you can just see in the top right hand side we're in S for single shot we have low speed continuous and then high speed continuous so there's a very small L and H are coming up in the view, in the um, display there then we have the self timer self timer with infrared remote and infrared remote by itself and then back to single shot so remember single shot is when you press the shutter button down and it will take one shot at a time even though I've got my finger down it's only going to do one shot if I change that to continuous high speed hold the button down you can hear that we give them quite a few frames so obviously you want to use a latter one for action pictures sports wildlife etc put that back to single next we have the autofocus button so again we can change between AFS which is the single servo mode used for subjects that don't move AFC mode so that's continuous autofocus for subjects that do move and we have an automatic mode which I recommend you don't use use either the S or the C mode leave that in S let's have a look at the back so on the back we have the quality which is the quality of our JPEG file so I'll just move this up to the top again so you can see in the bottom left hand corner it says raw we have an L fine so that means it's a large JPEG file and the fine means it's not heavily compressed so it's good quality now to change these depends on which dial you use the back dial as you can see is changing the compression and the top dial is changing the size so you've got small medium and large so the size is the number of pixels that are going to be in your photograph again I recommend always shooting large and then reducing the number of pixels in your editing software later on so that's that button ISO if we press that down we're currently at 200 ISO and we can either increase that or decrease it as you want so again this is low all the way down to low one so that's the equivalent of using 100 ISO on this camera then you have WB for white balance so this has got a little A down there then we have tungsten fluorescent daylight flash cloudy or overcast shady then you have a K setting here you can actually dial in the color temperature in terms of Kelvin and finally you have presets okay so that's the um, the button on the left hand side now we have a live view button which we're going to talk more, more about that in the field but the live view button allows you to see the image instead of looking through the viewfinder you can now see the image on the LCD if you've come from using a compact camera and that's how you normally use your compact camera because most of them nowadays don't have a viewfinder then using live view is a good way to start using a digital SLR also on many digital SLRs you've got video modes and you have to go to live view mode first before you start shooting video so to do video on this camera you have to go to live view first and then you press the OK button when you want to start and stop the video one big advantage of live view is the fact that we can get very accurate focus by combining 
manual focus on the lens with live view on the back. Well, we'll look at that when we talk about landscape photography in the field. One disadvantage of live view, especially on cold days, is that it actually takes quite a lot of power up. So if you're running out of battery power or it's very cold, I don't recommend using it. So let's turn the live view off. Okay, so now we'll look at the playback options on the Nikon D90. To play a photograph back, we just press the triangle button here. We have a nice photograph of a gecko. And now some of these buttons on the left hand side, their mode has changed. So the quality button is now a zoom in button. So remember, if you want to check focus, then always zoom right in. So you see this gecko is nice and sharp. You can zoom right out again. If you go past this view, then you get the grid view. So the grid is good if you want to quickly move through your photographs. And we just keep pressing plus to go back to our traditional view. To see more information, press either the up arrow or the down arrow. So now we get to see the histogram and we've got some information about the photograph. So we know what exposure mode was used, if we use exposure compensation, so on and so forth. So toggling, these up and down basically toggles on the view. Now an interesting thing with Nikons is if you zoom right in like this, maybe you want to check the focus of this photograph compared to the next one in the series. Well if we move left and right now, we're just going to move around this particular image. If you move the back command dial here, you'll actually move into the same area of the frame on the next photograph in series or the previous photograph in series like this. So it's very useful if you're checking focus between several photographs that are the same. So zoom in and then move this back command dial to compare pictures. Just go back to normal. If you're in the middle of playing back a picture and then something attracts your attention, you want to take a photograph of it, don't worry, just half press the shutter button here and you'll automatically go back into the shooting mode of the camera. Now with the autofocus modes, we've got the area mode and the area mode will, allows us to change which part of the frame the camera is going to focus on. On the D90, to change that, we need to go to the menu. We need to go to the custom setting menu, which is the pencil, and we'll press OK on autofocus. We're going to change the area mode. We have a choice of single point. That's the mode where the camera will only focus on the subject that's in that point that you see in the viewfinder. You can move th that point around by using this dial here. To do that, the switch, which is here, must be unlocked. The L stands for lock. So you have to put the switch down to the dot and then you're free to use, to use this dial to move the focus point around. The next option is dynamic area. In dynamic area, you choose where you want the focus system to start off, but if the subject moves away from that point, then the camera will try and follow it no matter where it is in the viewfinder. Then we have automatic area where the camera will basically focus automatically and it will try and look for humans, it particularly looks for heads and will focus on that if it sees any. Okay, one final thing to mention on autofocus is if you switch the camera to the continuous servo mode then we go to our autofocus setting. Let's go back to the AF area mode. You'll now see that now that we're in continuous we have a fourth option which is 3D tracking. So in 3D tracking, it will look at focusing on an object that's moving in the frame and it's particularly good at predicting where the subject's going to be. So it's called 
predictive autofocus. But that's only available once you've got the camera switched to the AFC mode. You'll see now that we've got AFC in the top. And just as a flashback, I got AFC by pressing this AF button here and moving the back dial from AFS to AFC. So with AFC, our continuous autofocus mode, we can also use 3D tracking, which is what I use when I'm photographing wildlife. So our final thing to talk about with autofocus is if you want to go to manual autofocus, you have two choices. We can either switch the camera from AF to manual on the body, or my preference is to switch the lens from the manual stroke A setting to manual on this switch on the lens. So that's a brief rundown of the settings of a Nikon D90 and similar Nikon bodies that have the two dials, on, one on the back and one on the front.